Viewer discretion is advised. The men took a fishing trip to the coast of South America, and while they're at it, they decided to sail around the coastline a little more. The trip itself was pleasant. The weather was glorious, and the sea was behaving herself for the first few weeks. He had to admit he was loving it, but it didn't last long. Something baffling happened and shook the men to the core. They wanted to check out an archipelago that supposedly was, in the travel guide's words, breathtaking to the few dozen to have seen them. And true to those words, the views were spectacular. They were covered by emerald verdant grass, colorful flowers, and rocks that all seemed to be uniformly pointed towards the sky. Despite the oddity with the rocks and stones, he felt as though he was witnessing beautiful Mother Nature herself for all of five minutes. One by one, the islands started shifting, slowly at first, creating colossal waves that shook the boat like a leaf in rapids. They then shifted faster, moving in a serpentine fashion as an enormous black shadow of some sort of archaic behemoth clouded the water below for miles around them. It continued for some odd minutes, as the water soon became like miniature tidal waves that they barely made it over somehow until all movement suddenly ceased and the shadow faded into the depths. The men looked at each other, soaked by the salty waters, and quickly made preparations to head to the mainland. Over there, look! A giant wave rose and was about to collapse on them. Brace yourselves! The wave crashed upon the ship, breaking it in half. As the men were tossed about in the water like a rag doll, they caught a glimpse of the creature, a behemoth that seemed to be the ocean itself. The men were but tiny specks of ants floating in the dark abyss. So this thing is responsible for their predicament, he thought. No, it was not responsible for anything that was happening. The Leviathan was merely existing, indifferent to the tidal waves on the surface, the sunken ship, or the drowning men. The survivors never spoke of what happened that day. The very thought of something that large prowling around the globe beneath the waves made the men question their own existence. So they decided to settle on ignorance, and ignorance is bliss. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today we bring you a SCP Foundation Keter class object, SCP-169. SCP-169, also known as the Leviathan, is believed to be an anthropod of gigantic proportions and the true beast behind the myth of the Leviathan. Much like many SCPs the Foundation has come across since its inception, the origins and true nature of such entities and objects are only theorized. 169 is no different. 169 was discovered by MTF Gamma-6, as the Foundation suspected anomalous activity stemming from the southern tip of South America and an archipelago. What aroused curiosity in Dr. Shirazawa and the Foundation itself was that the archipelago in question drifted several miles from their original locations in a rather serpentine fashion. After Gamma-6 was sent to investigate the islands, they were tasked with collecting soil samples, rock samples, vegetation, and any entities that they came across. If said entities were hostile, lethal force was authorized. A terrifying realization dawned on Gamma-6 as soon as they dug their shovels into the soil, and it promptly began to bleed much like the growths they took off of their rock-like plates that were scattered across the island. Feeling that further exploration was unnecessary, Dr. Shirazawa ordered Gamma-6 to return to a site near the coast of Brazil. The soil samples and growths found on the rocks were determined to be organic material and flesh, leading the doctor to understand that the archipelago was actually the spine of some gargantuan anthropod, hence why Leviathan is quite the appropriate moniker for it. According to Dr. Shirazawa and his researchers, 169 is estimated to be between 2,000 and 8,000 kilometers in length and millions of years old. Seeing that such other anomalies of a similar nature were not found on the planet, it was then decided that 169 was possibly the last of its kind. Therefore, almost nothing is known about the creature other than it is possibly dormant. This is believed to be the cause because it only sways or moves a little less than a mile every week and breathes periodically every few months. The ramifications of 169 being active would certainly be seismic tremors and tidal waves, so monitoring of 169 is to happen 24-7 in case of any changes in activity. By direct order of the O5 Council, 
All ships that come into contact with or near 169 are to be scrapped and erased from all records public and private. All individuals on board such ships are to be given Class A amnestics and told that they were involved in a shipwreck but managed to survive. Thankfully, these two events are rare as the archipelago is home to several species of endangered animals and plant life and so the area and islands are off limits, quite conveniently. Any images taken from satellites of 169 are to be changed and or destroyed, unless they have been taken with permission or by the Foundation. NASA has generously offered for the Foundation to use their own satellites to monitor and take photos of 169 after the Foundation donated a large sum of them. The U.S. National Oceanic Administration came close to discovering the existence of 169 after they detected an ultra-low frequency sound coming from around the southern coast of South America. An SCP agent within the administration tried to prevent this news from being released to the public, but failed in this task and the public at large learned of this. The Foundation, however, deduced from the news that the origin of the sound was in fact the head of 169. In the end, none was the wiser as to what made the sound. The O5 Council ordered that all attempts to uncover the truth of the noise were to be suppressed or sabotaged and undermined by embedded Foundation agents. Should 169 ever become active, it would mean the major seismic shifts in tidal waves, a natural disaster that rivals the vision of apocalypse. Several proposals have been made in regards to this possible event and many have to do with the utilization of reality-warping Thamiel class SCPs, as suggested by Dr. Shirazawa. Dr. Shirazawa had a vision. A past researcher appeared in front of him in a dream. An old researcher friend of his. Back then, she was known as Mary Nakayama. She was a lively woman, a bright spot in the bleak foundation. No matter what gore or horrific knowledge she witnessed or obtained, she always smiled and hoped for a brighter future compared to Shirazawa's dismal outlook on the state of affairs. But that was the old Mary. Now she was known by her designation, SCP-001, the Godhead Eternal. After acquiring multi-universal levels of power and reality-warping capabilities, she had ascended to a high plane of existence, but promised that she would try to steer things right. It will take time, and to wish her luck before she left. He believed that she had returned to them through that dream of his, which of course brought terrible possible consequences as well. For why else would an omnipotent being such as herself make her presence known again in this world? That, and she said so herself. Shirazawa, my friend, she said, I have observed the world and the unfathomable universe that encapsulates our own and even the ones around that and has determined that the Leviathan's stirring is simply the beginning of apocalyptic events set to come upon them soon. Visions flashed in Shirazawa's eyes. He was frightened by the hellscapes. If the Leviathan awakens fully, it will mark the beginning of a K-class extinction event. And should that happen, summon me, she said. She warned that she could only be summoned once and once only. Therefore, they must be extremely vigilant in preventing all disaster scenarios before they even think to have her aid. A Hail Mary, if they will. The O5 scoffed at him after hearing it. Do you have proof that she will indeed protect humanity and this planet from destruction? Surely you don't expect us to take a man's dream as fact, yes? Finally, it's about time a Thamiel class decides to help us out of its own free will. If she can prevent any K-class extinction event, then perhaps we should think about becoming more proactive with a few of our pressing problems facing the Foundation," he said sarcastically. But deep down, they all knew there was merit in Dr. Shirazawa's words. They have no such luxury. The doctor pulled out a small gray metal box with a small concave circle on the top of it that has a small hole in the center. She instructed any O5 council member to trickle their blood into this until the box is full. Only then will she be called here to protect us. I now give this to you. The doctor hands it over to the council and left the room. The council stared at the box, not sure what to make of it. They knew that the Leviathan could not be contained. One small move from it will rock the very foundation of the continents. They can only be saved once. If their demise doesn't come from the Leviathan, it would be from other threats. Apocalypse is inevitable in the end. Somewhere, 
deep in the ocean where no light reaches. The Leviathan stirs. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.